Hello everyone and welcome to another video on building event-driven serverless applications with .NET on AWS. The topic of today's video is something I am incredibly excited to be talking to you about and that is how you can start to observe your serverless applications. And observability becomes really important with servers because you've got lots of these loosely joined, loosely coupled small pieces of application code with Lambda, stitched together with things like SQS and EventBridge, SNS maybe, maybe some DynamoDB. So how would you actually work out what is going on within your system? How do you give yourself that ability to ask the questions of your system that you may need in production. To do that, we're gonna use a combination of open telemetry and an awesome tool called Honeycomb. Let's dive into it. So let's actually start from what kind of things we get in Honeycomb. So you can see here, I've got a trace that I am looking at, and that is a trace that came in to my create product API endpoint on my API. That was the first the initiator of this request, if you will. And we can now actually see the different services, or in this case, Lambda functions, that this request ran through. It went to the create product service, went through DynamoDB um, and a handler for the DynamoDB stream. There was a publish off to SNS that you can see here. And then off the back of SNS, there was two other services that were triggered to update the product catalog and also to publish events externally outside of our domain to Amazon EventBridge. And each step here, we can see how long things took. So we can see that actually the record was put onto DynamoDB after about 0 point, just on just maybe 0 point, 0 two seconds maybe. But then there was actually a gap between when DynamoDB put the record and our stream handler actually kicked in. So that we can start to see there that the time taken for DynamoDB to do its work. And you can see the same here after the SNS publish, our record was published to SNS, our update product catalog and our external event publisher didn't actually kick in immediately. This is incredibly powerful to understand how your system is actually working. You can just throw a request into your system and then start to dive in what is actually happening behind the scenes. Is it performing as you expected it to? If we come back up a layer in, in, in the Honeycomb UI now, we can actually run queries across all of our traces. So you see I've got a whole bunch of traces going on here for different requests coming into our system. And then we can also start to do some interesting things around visualization. And um, we can start to count the number of requests. So I've not actually made any requests um, recently. We can maybe group this. We can maybe group this by the, let's say, the function name. So we run that query again, and then we get a different line for each function. So we see some different lines down at the bottom here. This, of course, isn't a video about Honeycomb, but I thought I'd show you the kind of things you can get once you start adding tracing to your application. So let's go and look at the code behind this now. If I flick over to JetBrains Rider, um, what I have got, this is all built on top of my event driven with Terraform um, example. All the GitHub links, of course, will be in the, in the, in the description below. So this, this product API service is made up of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different Lambda functions um, for creating products, the actual API endpoints, and then the asynchronous things that happen behind the scenes. And each of these, we want to trace all of these um, functions in the same way. You know, the actual function code itself is you know, much like any other function handler. Um, so what I've actually done is added a... Um, abstraction layer to actually start the tracing outside of the individual Lambda functions. So if I go off to my shared library now and I have a look at this traced function class, this is an abstract class that allows us to implement tracing for any Lambda function. And the important bit from a configuration perspective is this constructor of our traced function. This is where we can configure um, how open telemetry is going to work within our application. So we set up uh, the resource and we add a source to um, 
open telemetry to tell open telemetry to collect traces for um, any traces with this name with the service name we add some auto instrumentation for aws sdk calls and for pulling information from lambda and then we add what's called an exporter in open telemetry and we're actually going to export directly to honeycomb quick side note this is not ordinarily what you would do in production. Ordinarily, you would use the open telemetry collector. So your Lambda function would export to the collector, and then you've got a single location to configure the output to whoever your exporter may be, in this case, Honeycomb. And when we enable the Honeycomb exporter, we just pass in the name of our service and also the API key for Honeycomb, which I'm going to pass in as a environment variable of my Lambda function. And then you see, when we actually start to trace our function now, all of the open telemetry implementation in .NET is built on top of the system diagnostics activity class. So anything you do with activity sources and contexts and activities, that will then get mapped up to open telemetry, providing you've configured this tracer provider. So you see what I'm doing here is I'm starting a root span. I'm starting a root trace um, as soon as my handler gets executed. Um, I had an old bunch of different tags to my, um, to my span. And then I actually get into executing my handler. And when it actually comes to executing my handler itself, my handler is also passed in as an abstract property and the function itself um, is configured up here. And this is, this is the core of how we configure open telemetry. So we've now got across all of our Lambda functions, this single configuration for how to do tracing. And then we start off some general traces around to wrap around each function execution. I've then added some implementations for things like API Gateway, DynamoDB Streams, SQS, just to simplify how to work with things like API Gateway. So with this API Gateway traced function, for example, I um, dynamically load the trace ID from the header. So if this is an API call that has come from an existing trace, that will be passed in as a header, HTTP header. So I'm just unwrapping that HTTP header, um, adding some default at some default tags to my span for things like the HTTP method, what user agent was used, how big was the content. And these are all really useful pieces of data that I can then use to ask questions of my application in the Honeycomb UI. And we've got similar things for SQS um, and for SNS and for DynamoDB streams. And these are all just um, abstract classes that we can then use to, to abstract away some of the complexity around setting up tracing for these different um, Lambda event sources. So if we go off and have a look at our function themselves now, and we actually start with our create product function. Um, and you see this inherits from the API gateway traced function method. Um, I pass in my service name as create product, which if you recall from Honeycomb, that is what we saw in the Honeycomb UI as the service name. And then I actually um, override my handler, um, handler method to use my function handler from this function class. Um, and then within my actual handler itself, I can actually start up some new, some more activities. So because um, all of the activities are started from this activity.current static class, because I've already initialized um, this root span in my, um, in my traced handler, my abstract handler, then I can just start new activities and they will automatically be grouped underneath that, that root span. And then I go off and do my work. I do some stuff in here. I add some tags to my um, span just to get some more details. And then when I actually return my API gateway response, I actually pass in my trace ID into that response. So I have that back in my calling application. So API gateway is quite simple because all I'm doing is getting an API, API gateway, an API request in, doing some work, returning that, happy days. And there's the mapping from um, request coming in to invocation of our Lambda function is very much one-to-one, -one, one request to one Lambda function. 
things get a little bit more interesting when you start to look at services like SQS. So if I go off to my external event publisher now, and this is the this is the function that's going to take in um, my um, updates to my DynamoDB table and publish them out to EventBridge. Now, of course, when SQS is used as a trigger for Lambda, messages are batched up into, into a set. Now, of course, we could limit our batch size to one so that we only ever get this one-to-one -one relationship between message from SQS to Lambda, but that's not the most efficient way of doing things. So what I'm doing here is I'm still pulling off a batch of records in one one go, and what you can actually do in Open Telemetry with the activity um, classes is actually create your own activity context. And when you create an activity context, you can pass in an existing trace ID and parent span. And that's what I'm doing in this hydrate context from message um, method here. So for every record that I iterate over in my handler, I will create a new activity context and then start a new span using that activity context. And that's how we can then start to group these spans together across different Lambda functions and through different event-driven services. So if we have a look at how we do that, um, if I just zoom in a little bit here, this hydrate context from message. So I know that the data coming into this function is going to come from SNS. So for whenever SNS passes a message directly to SQS, you get this um, very specific wrapper around your actually event data. So the first thing I need to do is DC realize my message body to this SNS payload format. And then I've got this message wrapper class and this message wrapper class is just a, is the wrapper that all of my services across my whole business will use to publish events to any event consumer. Um, and this gives us really standard structure to all of our events across all of our systems. And for the cases of simplicity here, I've just got this message metadata object and within the metadata of my message, I'm including the current trace and the current span. And I can then use that in other places. And then I've got this data property, which is just the actual event payload itself. And of course that is um, generic. So then I need to DC realize my message wrapper. Um, so I've got my data from SNS. I've now got my message message wrapper object and I can now create a new activity context. And you see when I create this new activity context, I'm passing in a parent trace and a parent span. And this will now give me a context which is linked to the other requests within this trace. And I return that context back to my function. And now I have this hydrated context and I can use that to do all of my various um, tracing. So you see here, I'm tracing the whole um, record processing. And then I've also got a second trace down here where I just create a new activity. Um, again, passing in my hydrated context. Um, things can get quite confusing between .NET and OpenTelemetry because OpenTelemetry refers to traces and spans and um, .NET returns, refers to activity sources and activities. Activity source equals a trace, activity equals a span. So although we're using the word activity here, that does relate to a span in OpenTelemetry. And I use the same mechanism in both DynamoDB. So if I go and have a look at my DynamoDB stream handler, again, I loop over my DynamoDB records that come in in that group, and I just load my context. In this case, I'm actually storing the trace ID and the span ID in my actual DynamoDB table along with my record. So that, of course, comes out as part of my um, DynamoDB attributes. Okay, so the final thing I've done within this project is I've actually got some integration tests in here now. Uh, and within this integration test, I've got one here that should create and then updates and then deletes a product. And of course, these are these are outside in tests, so I'm just making requests to actual API endpoints. And of course, because I'm returning the trace ID in my HTTP headers, I can then actually write out my traces in my uh, my trace IDs in my test run. So if I go off to my terminal now for a second um, and I run a .NET test, 
um, and I just pass in some verbose logging because I want to actually see all the details of the the route lines I have from my actual test. And what this this is actually making API calls now, traces will start. But what I'll actually get back once my test run has complete is I'll actually get the trace IDs related to my integration tests. So in this case, the tests will pass. Um, but if you imagine this was a failed test, I could then simply grab this trace ID here. I can then go off to Honeycomb and I can actually run a search now on my trace ID and where my trace ID equals that. And let's get rid of some of this grouping, run my query. And there I have all my traces related to that specific test run. If I come in and have a look at the traces, you can see this is much like what we have already seen. Um, we get all of the different traces in here. And you can actually see there's quite a gap here, interestingly, between when the SNS publish happened and when my actual um, Lambda function kicked in. So you can start to see some really interesting things when you start to look into this. I realized, I realized that was a little bit whistle stop, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the kind of things you can start to do once you trace your application. You start adding more observability. It enables you to start to ask the questions of your system that you didn't even know you needed to ask because you've got this really fine grained information with these really wide attribute sets you see here on the right hand side. I've got things about the version of .NET I was using, the ARN of my function, you know, all of this really superb information about my system and about how my system is performing. And I can use that to query all manner of different things. And that what that's what makes observability so powerful, as well as being almost necessary when you're building serverless applications, because you've got all of these small pieces. Now, of course, Honeycomb is just one of many tools that are out there. It's something I've been using in the last few weeks. Big shout out to Martin Thwaites. If you're watching this, a lot of this has come from the conversations I've had with you about how to do observability in .NET. So thank you for that, Martin. I will put Martin's Twitter in the description below. Martin is awesome if you're doing .NET things. So that's it for this week. You'll hear me talking a lot more about observability and how to do good observability with .NET and AWS over the coming weeks. But I just wanted to give you a little taste of this week of the kinds of powerful things you can do when you add this instrumentation to your application. As always, if you like the video, please like, please subscribe, and I will see you next week. Thank you all for watching.